when winds blow outside Fatah al Mudarris studio, he would stop and listen, carrying a brush in his hand and trying to capture the color of silence, the hidden rhythms of the passing moments, playing on his white canvas as a true musician whose musical instrument is the limitless landscape of imagination. أصوات الأقوى تأثيراً علي واللي برحب فيها دائماً هي صوت الريح صوت الريح صوت الريح على المادة إن كان أعمدة لا أصوات العاصفة أو كان على أشجار عالية أو على عيدان صغيرة مغروسة بالأرض تعطي نوم الصفير هذا الصوت الوحيد اللي يحسه فيه Being one of the leading figures of the modern art movement in Syria and the Arab world, Al Mudarris paved the way for a new generation of artists who derived inspiration from his style, technique, and artistic vision. He actually made us see the world afresh. Fate struck Fatih al-Mudarris hard when he lost his father at the age of four, who was assassinated in his mid-twenties by a group of thugs over a dispute over land ownership and the class differences. This tragic incident left a deep scar on the child's soul and would linger long in his imagination till the very end. It is no exaggeration to say that his father's early departure was to be considered a turning point in his life as a person as well as a painter. It naturally affected his psychological formation and overall perspective of life. <laughs> جدا جميلة يعني القتل وجبار الطبيعة كانوا صورة واحدة بزيان الطفل عمره أربع سنوات Thus in most of his paintings subjects like martyrdom, crucifixion and absence would loom large, being now all alone with his mother and the rural landscape of his northern border village where al Quiq River runs, inspiring the child to paint in his fancies thousands of paper boats and imaginary sailors. In his village, he discovered colors along with life's hardships and sorrows. When he had to leave the countryside for Aleppo, still a young child, he carried with him a rich memory burdened with images of fruits, rocks, skies, clouds, stars, and moons. Such details would constitute the raw materials for his artistic creation later in life. Although his childhood was somehow stolen from him at an early age, after being denied the place where he was born, he had to embrace a new landscape, which was more complex and more metropolitan, yet less romantic.
However, his rural childhood would remain a permanent inspiration, disappearing at times only to reappear stronger in new shapes and forms. After receiving his high school degree from the Aleppo American College in 1940, Al-Mudarris studied at the Academia di Belle Arti di Roma in Rome from 1954-1960 and developed a distinctive style of painting that incorporated various art techniques. For instance, he abandoned traditional iconography and paid more attention to faces, profiles, and geometric lines. During his study, he met leading European artists and intellectuals, especially Jean-Paul Sartre, the famous French thinker with whom he cooperated to translate some of his poems into French. Some critics even speculated that al Mudarris' style changed tremendously under the influence of existential ideas championed by Sartre during the 50s. al Mudarris also studied at the College of Fine Arts in Paris for three years in the early 1970s and polished up further his technical and compositional skills before returning to Syria to teach at Damascus University where he became head of the Department of Fine Arts and later the General Dean of Fine Arts Association in Syria. During this period, two factors emerged regarding his painterly philosophy. One, his connection with his local cultural heritage, from which he derived his unique understanding of such elements as light, colors, sound, and even smell of soil and myths. Two, his cultivation of a more impressionistic style made possible by his sophisticated academic education and deep intellectual experience, thus moving away from his early realistic phase. Yet al Mudarris was originally trained by the celebrated Syrian neoclassicist painter Wahbil Hariri, who introduced him to fellow artist Louis Kayali, with whom he would collaborate in numerous art exhibitions and events. Upon returning from Europe, al Mudarris abandoned the traditional formulas of painting prevalent in Syria and began to create a language where his lines and colors were essentially derived from the primitive and ancient fountains of the Syrian civilization. In his expressionistic idiom, reality is mixed with fiction. The characters he painted are taken both from the current present and from the distant past, picturing actual peasants and workers and legendary figures alike. These faces recall ancient figurines and idols, 
as well as mythical figures drawn on frescoes and ruins in temples and caves all across Syria, especially Palmyra's incredible icons and statues. These figures are enriched with al Mudarris' fascination with relations among colors, which he used to speak about vehemently and passionately in most of his interviews. Red can stand for violence, he would say. But the blue is so fragile and it can stand for sadness. Green can be very dangerous when misused, but white resembles mystery and perhaps the absence of all colors. في ألوان خاف منها كثير ما قرب عليها كثير ولا نادرا تكون في حالات الضعف مثل أخضر فيرونيز فيرونيز عم بشت أوقع هناك لون بالعالم لون شرشي هذا كيف كيف بعالجوا الفنانين ما بعرف مشهور بس هذا نقطتين ثلاثة انه بكفي مشان يعبي مشان يصرخ مثل بياع الباذنجان في الشارع يصرخ يعيط له صوت رهيب مثل الشيرين الحريق كلهم بيحكي مع فنان بحديث خاص كلهم بيطلعوا بعض احمر انا عندي بستعمله للقتال أستعب الغاية من لوحاتي السياسية لأنه بفتح لي المعركة هو ثون بداية تافه لكن فعال بس أنا بستعمله بلطف يعني بجيب له بجيب له عبد بجيب له بجيب له أسود برضي بضحك عليه بجيب له شوية ذهبي مشان انه انت قوي مو هيك خذ خذ البقعه الذهبيه شوف قتل كل الاحمر روحوا والله اشوف له رمزين هو الذهبي بالنسبه لي رمز واحد تقليدي انه البيزنطيين استعملوه استعملوه باحترام يعني له علاقه بتاريخنا واحيانا استعمل بشكل آه الشرقيين استعملوه بشكل كثير فولجير زين وفي النسوان بكميات كبيره كثير يعني خضعوا معناه هالضوء فيه اصبح ضوء شرشيح يعني كيس ضوء بشع صور ما بعرف شيء شيء نسبه المربع من إضاءة بالذهب لأنه بشح حواليها هذا كمان كثير كثير حكي أنا بستعمله لي لقتل بعض الألوان في اللوحة يعني شرطي بحطه أنا يعني بحطه كشرطي مثل ما بأذي الأحمر بحط له أسود خليه واقف عنده بقى حاجة عياط يعني أول ما استعملت الأزهر استعملته باللوحات لوحاتي السياسية اللي رسمت فيها بيروت اكتشف لي إنه كل الناس بيعرفوا الأزهر بيعطيك عمق بيعطيك برودة بيعطيك هدوء بالعكس أنا استعملت الأزهر بعنف أكثر من إله الأحمر يعني التسميات اذهان الناس عن ازرق مو كثير مضبوط لو الازرق صعب في مكانه وبالشكل هذا فظيع يعني لون لون حي مقاتل مثل الزعرانه الاحمر يعني بس على اكثر نبل واكثر خبث لون ذكي الازرق فين تحطوا؟ أنا بستعمل الأزرق كسائل كسائل 
بيعيش في الوان اخرى يعني صديق واحيانا بيزعل الازرق اذا تقلت عليه بيخرب لك اللوحه كلها ترفضه Warm and vibrant colors like red, blue, yellow, and green executed in a variety of ways, sometimes with dense application of paint, sometimes with scratched, fragmentary fashion, enabled Al Mudarris to map up a new artistic horizon for himself. Often, a specific group of colors, such as red and black, or white and fawn, will dominate the painting. and produce a dominant effect. al Mudarris painted in particular the life of simple peasants at wedding parties, at funerals, at workplace, at farms, inside bedrooms or imaginary settings, yet all mingled with an inescapable tinge of sadness. In such scenes and landscapes, The viewer might expect to see joyful celebration side by side with the tragic lamentation, all with an aura of melancholy engulfing the suffering of ordinary human beings in distress. At the heart of Damascus, on Ahmed Maryoud Street, his studio stands, dimly lighted, with windows not very high off the ground, resembling a real hermitage for creativity and experimentation. Inside the studio, Sufi music tends to play, mixed with the sound of a coffee boiling and overflowing the pot. In one of his essays, novelist Abdurrahman Munif, upon visiting him in his studio, describes the scene inside as follows. al Mudarris was usually late in tending to his coffee, as he was often busy with the idea which precluded him from paying attention to anything else. It seemed that if the idea came late, it might be lost, but attending to the coffee can wait. and if necessary, it could be re-prepared or even be dispensed with, but not the thought of visiting whim or inspiration. Looking around in his studio, the visitor could see white canvases thrown in different directions, corners, and behind doors, furniture, tables, chairs, as if he spent all his days looking for a secret, as if He put them there so the colors and lines can ripe in silence or develop on their own or reshape their demeanor and spaces continuously. San Suri San Hassas. Wa yaash akhir makan, yani yaash akhir bayt, wa yaash akhir watan. Walakin ay bahsa min zaman. Al zaman allazi yu'min lahu معنى المكان 
أن يكون وطن جميلا يكون بيت إنسانيا وأن نتغاضى عن الأحزان الجانبية التي تفضها عليه الظروف Death struck again in an Amudarre's life and deprived him, this time, of two young children who passed away at a very tender age. These tragic losses remain visible in most of his paintings, coloring his imagination with a hidden hue of mournfulness. His sense of bereavement was so deep and overwhelming in his writings as well as paintings. Even when much time had passed, the memory of loss would resurface as an echo or a memory and never fades away. For instance, in a painting entitled Jesus Returning to Nazareth, al Mudaris expresses such existential meanings as alienation, rootlessness, and exile all rooted in his personal life. al Mudaris was a powerful representative of his age. He was very clear in his intellectual choices and positions, always siding with the oppressed and the poor, expressing himself, though indirectly, through his works and embracing values of Arab unity and social change. As a great stylist, though, al Mudarris was involved in experimentation, moving from realism, his first phase, to impressionism, to Surrealism and even Cubism, which was popularized in European art, especially with such great modern geniuses like Pablo Picasso in his blue phase, Salvador Dali in his outrageous surrealistic experimentation, and Henri Matisse in his serene depictions of still life. But al Mudarres did this in his own way, deriving inspiration from these giants long enough to continue his heated search for new styles and visions. He participated in numerous exhibitions in Venice, Sao Paulo, where he received the Medal of Honor, and Montreal, among many other cities. His work was held in private and public collections at different Arab and international museums all across the globe. Beside his career as a painter, al Mudarris was also involved in literature, especially short stories and occasional poems publishing one famous collection of tales called Mint Plant. From his perspective, the written word distills what is most noble in man to oppose injustice and oppression. His prose is colorful, original, and innovative, reflecting his true personality as a painter. His personal memoirs are the most fertile and most important source that would enable future generation of artists to understand his life and the many influences that shaped his imagination and artistic experience.
At his free time, Al-Mudarris played the piano, thus mixing music with the world, with the color, in one single amazing heterogeneity of a creative power. Thus, to understand Al-Mudarris and fully comprehend his genius, it is essential to view him as a complex whole. His life was as important as his art. His writings seem to supplement his paintings and his many interviews revealed much of what the paintings could not express directly. al Mudarris painted the essential, the most genuine and human personality, liberating himself from all rules and restrictions as an artist. Al Mundaris managed to initiate really a new artistic school by all himself because of the richness and diversity of his paintings, some of which broke the record for an Arab artist and were sold at high prices in Paris, London, and in New York. Since his personality was a mixture of the artist, the poet, the musician, and even the bohemian philosopher, his artistic vision, in many ways, reflected a true master at his craft. al Mudarris died in 1999 and was buried in Bab Saghir Cemetery in Damascus. He ascended to heaven like a star leaving behind a long trail of light, religious symbolism laced with sensitive renderings of ordinary people from antiquity, as well as Christian and Muslim symbolism, all touched essential codes in us, anticipating deep philosophical speculations. His works are deeply steeped in the echoes, colors, and textures of a human life, so much so that they would stand the test of time for many, many generations to come. <laughs>